welcome back, you good-looking people. This is What's Well with White Wilkes, and I am your host, White Wilkes. Today on the podcast, we have my very good friend. I grew up with him. His name is Jordan Pouncey on the show. He play, he's a wide receiver for the Florida Gators. I don't know how you're saying, hey, why, you know, why do you got a Florida Gator on the show? And I say, well, you know what? Friendship outlasts. Uh, any rivalries and hey you know what he plays football no basketball so um, I, I, he was in town he just hit me up we tried to you know get together obviously our schedules are pretty insane so um, we couldn't um, get him while I, or, you know I couldn't get him on the on the show when I was home but um, he was he was in Tallahassee and he said it you know I, I saw the text after practice I rushed home and I'm, I'm setting everything up and um, here we are so he's about to get here in a couple minutes and uh, I'm very excited so thanks for watching thanks for listening um, go ahead and throw us a subscribe on the video because coming up here I'm gonna have a giveaway I'm not gonna spoil it right now but I'm definitely gonna be doing some type of giveaway and I think you guys will like it and it'll be for people that subscribe to the YouTube channel so if you're listening to this head over to my YouTube channel it is just my name Wyatt Wilkes if you're watching this and you're not subscribed go ahead and hit that subscribe button it really helps out the channel and you'll automatically be entered for the secret giveaway, which I will probably be announcing maybe next week, something like that. But, um, Hey, go ahead and get in there, get, get subscribed. It really, like I said, helps out the channel. So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And, uh, let's get to it. Three, two, Jordan Patsy. How you doing, buddy? I'm good, man. Long time no see. How you been? All right. See, you're whispering. I see. I have to do everyone's voice on this board because I'm professional now. And uh, everyone just talks super quiet in their microphones. Is this better? Well, we probably just clipped, but it's okay. Just uh, talk in a normal voice. <laughs> do you know how to? Yeah, I, I have a very normal voice. All right, voice. that's fine. I can probably go back and post edit and uh, just like make you sound like a, like you're on, we're on NPR. Uh, so for people that don't know, obviously they've already seen the intro, but for people that don't know, you play at Florida for football. Go Gators. Uh, well, I don't know about all that in this house, but, <laughs> um, Jordan and I grew up together on the same street. So we've known each other for, uh, what, what, how long has it been? What's, what's, uh, 20. Two 20, minus five. 22 oh, minus five. Wait, no, that doesn't make yes. sense. Where we met when we were five. So that would be I don't know, 17 or it's been 17 years. Golly, you'd think we'd be, you know, a little bit better at, at mathematics. I don't know. But um, how have you been? I've been good, how's man. The, how's the football life? Going into my fifth year now. Yeah. It's uh whew. It's been a it's been a long career. Yeah, well you were at Texas first, right? And yeah. then now you're at Florida. Yeah, I spent uh three I guess two and a half seasons at Texas. Um, well, what would you say the biggest difference is? Like living wise or the school or like just everything? Everything, yeah. Uh, well, obviously, like living, going from living in like the state capital of Texas, which is a really big, it's like a pretty big city. I, I always compared it to like kind of like Orlando, but then the going from that, going to Gainesville, you know, there's not really much in Gainesville besides the University of Florida. It's just a drain swamp, basically. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I'm pretty sure it actually is. Like, I'm pretty sure that it was just a full swamp and they drained it oh, yeah, to like but... build roads <laughs> there's i mean there's definitely still like marshes around oh yeah definitely so I, I, i'm guessing you like florida more and even yeah. if you didn't you'd lie <laughs> no I, I love being in gainesville it's like a nice change of pace and obviously like being back in in florida like you know there's yeah. a lot of people from our high school that went to uf yeah so, yeah I mean, here too as well yeah so it's uh it's been nice like i've gotten to see like so many people that like i would like i wouldn't have normally seen if i was out in texas you know and like i live with my little brother too which is pretty cool so yeah then, uh, yeah so ethan he's a freshman right or sophomore yeah he's going into his second year yeah so. okay so and then uh he had the groin or hip injury he had double hip repair he tore both of his hip labrums uh, yeah. Good Lord, I've torn both my shoulder labrums, Oof. and it's no fun. Yeah, so I don't know about a hip, it, both hips. He was like, 
it was, it was hard for him for sure definitely hard but he had a really good doctor actually the doctor that did his surgery is the dude who did uh uh nick saban's hip replacement <laughs> all right so he's doing all right then. yeah he's he's good now so and he's a cornerback yeah, he plays corner. Okay. Um, and then, obviously, you're a wide receiver. Well, not obviously. These people don't know. So, um, why, do you guys go against each other in practice? We do, actually. And sometimes like, I got I to gotta do them dirty. Oh, that's got to be fun. Yeah. It's, it's Every time it happens, too, like, everybody makes a big deal out of it, which is, like, it's – Well, of it, course. It's, it's so funny. Like, do, do you go – when you know he's on you, do you go harder? Honestly, No. Because I don't want to embarrass him in front of the coaches. See, you're a good brother. Yeah. I, I See, I don't – if my brother played on the basketball team here, I don't know if I would be able to to hold back. <laughs> like, I think I'd have to – like, it would hurt, but I don't know. Like, I don't know if I could. It's funny you say that because I had one – we were – it was during the spring, actually. I had a play where I caught it. I, like, left the shoulder and spun out of it and scored. And I, like, posted it on my story, and my mom got mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, your brother, that's not even a fair rep. Your brother's coming off a of hip surgery. Like, why would you do that? And I'm like, mom. <laughs> of, course. I, <laughs> of course. Younger brother. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. And, you know, it's a... Uh, I would definitely say I, I I try to give everybody the same treatment. You know? All right, that's fair. Uh, well, see, I, I I never transferred. I never did that. Um, what was the hardest thing about it? <clears throat> the hardest thing about it? Well, at the time, I had a girlfriend at Texas. That makes it hard. And the, like leaving leaving her and leaving you know all my friend well all my friends that i had made at texas like that was really hard and you know going for ut is a really good academic school but uf is like top mm -hmm. 10 in the nation yeah really good and the hardest thing one of the hardest things was like the academic pace like and i changed my major when i transferred Oof, i, so, I changed my major my second or after my second year and i still had to go back uh, like back and make up a bunch of classes did yeah. you have to do that yeah like right now I'm, i feel like i think i'm in some gen ed classes and it's like dude i don't want to do this yeah i i i, I had to take um uh, extra classes because not only did i switch my major but i i did take bowling three semesters in a row so <laughs> <laughs> wait a bowling class yeah, yeah yeah like where you come into class and bowl like is there like a bowling alley on campus or something yeah, that you guys i don't know to? if it's still there because it you, we used to have this place called the union um they've been working on it for years but i'm i'm not sure if it you know they're still gonna have it but I absolutely loved it. <laughs> like I, I got pretty good at bowling af after a while. Um, and if, like the first semester, like the teacher was like, okay, whatever. The second semester, she was like, oh, you, you're back. Like, okay, like, all right, cool. Like, welcome. And the third one, she's like, why are you here? <laughs> like, there are other kids that need to take electives. And uh, your academic counselor, like, let that happen. Well, yeah, I was, <laughs> I was all right. You know, I was, I was getting good grades and. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I had to fill it up with something and he's like, you know, and I was already taking, the thing is, is like, I was already taking like five, uh, like five, like really tough classes. So like, I didn't want my hours to be too many. And, but like, I had to, for whatever reason, I had to fill up the, like a class slot. And so I just like took bowling three times. Oh. It was just, I mean, Hey, it was fun. I, it sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. Like most people like do it like recreationally but like taking it for a class wouldn't be well now i shoot after that i, I went bowling quite a bit really? after that yeah well what are you majoring in now so when i was at texas i was majoring in film and like the film school at texas is really big because that's where mcconaughey went mm -hmm. and uh so well, he probably pumps money into that so yeah he actually teaches a class i was a like literally the next semester i was supposed to take his class well i mean maybe like he should have held out for another just so you could say like i had a class with matthew mcconaughey see the thing is though he was like almost never there Oh, I believe that. Uh, yeah, I listened to a podcast of his where he said that he taught a class, and my first thought was he 
definitely never shows up. Yeah, like he they said he would like be he would be like a Skype call, like he'd be like across yeah. the world filming somewhere. Yeah. Like. But yeah, now I'm in uh African American studies and at first I hated it. I was like I, this is like you know, what am I going to do with this? Like I I wanted to go into film, but then you know, I transferred in January 2020. The pandemic happened and that stuff with George Floyd happened. And I was like, what better, like I'm studying about like African-American history. And like, that's, that, you know, that didn't just happen for some odd reason. Like there's, you know, hundreds of years of like, you know, mm. stuff that led up to that, you know? So is that like, are the classes you take, like how far back are we talking? Like, like since the beginning of people, like, no, like no. you know what I'm saying? Like, like since, uh, since Europeans started enslaving Africans, basically. Okay. So, so like from like the 1600s, basically. Okay, yeah. So like right now I'm in a Black Power Movement class, and we're focusing on uh, like the Black Power Movement in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Okay. So like talking about like the Black Panthers and stuff like that. Yeah, shoot, I gotta try to get in one of those classes. It's, I'm 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 getting another major in. Uh, um, or I'm double major because I already graduated with a humanities degree and then now I'm doing social science. So that one of those classes actually might fall in my, like I could probably maybe get one. Definitely. I'm, like, I'm, I'm in like, I've, I, I, cause I think that, that it counts as history, right? Like you could get yeah. one as a history class, yeah. like just like by itself. I, I got to ask my academic advisor, but well, sounds like you got a lot going on. You just went through training camp, right? Yeah. It was like a month. <sighs> Ooh. it yeah. was like every day you didn't know we were going like literally every day i think in like a maybe three weeks span we only had like three days off yeah there, i don't think any college athlete ever hears the words training camp and doesn't like have horrible flashback oh my god you like i Every freshman, I like even like recruits when I was at Texas, I told I would always tell them the story. Um, this is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs> it, it was my freshman year. It was like the second or third day of fall camp. And like for some reason, they moved us out of our dorm to like another like crappier dorm. Uh, but like we are all paired up with a roommate. And I had Colin Johnson. Colin Johnson decided to sleep in the facility, which I was like, we're, I don't want to be like stuck in the facility 24 yeah. seven. So I stayed in the dorm by myself. And for some reason, I guess I forgot to turn the volume up on my phone for my alarm. That, that it like will get you in some of the trouble. I've done yes. the same thing. Yeah. So I remember <laughs> I'm like dead asleep. And I hear like a loud bang on my door. I go, it's our GA. He's like, like you're you're done. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. So I had to run to the facility. My coach didn't even let me come into meetings. He had me get taped up, ready for practice. I had to go to the practice field while everybody was still in meetings. I did a thousand yards worth of air raids, which an air raid is you start on the goal line, you do a up down every five yards. I did a thousand yards. So basically like 10 times up and down the field. And then I thought I was done. I was like, man, that was horrible. I don't ever want to do that again. We get in like stretch lines for practice. And I'm like, <sighs> I'm just standing there just kind of like minding my own business. And I, our head coach, he like yells my name and I see him pointing and I look, there's um, a plate of breakfast and it's like, we had breakfast tacos all the time. He took the tortilla off the breakfast taco. There was fruit and a strawberry milk. He had me sit crisscross applesauce on a Gatorade towel and eat the breakfast with no with my gloves my football gloves on i couldn't use a utensil <laughs> i had to sit crisscross at like indian style <laughs> that's a good with my question. with my helmet on oh. so like <laughs> so just complete and utter embarrassment yes in front of the whole in front of god and country <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, that's brutal. And uh, no, the the worst part was we had a, a like a, a a really an all-American left tackle. 
he fell on top of me and dumped the plate and they made me pick it up and they tried to make me eat it but there was turf beads in it i was like i can't eat this and they were like well get get out of here <laughs> and we used to have we used to have this uh crimson it was like a bell on a stand and it's you know like the navy seals in bunch yeah, school yeah. they have the bell mm -hmm. like if somebody like transferred or like somebody like quit the team, they would have to like get up and ring the bell. So like he put the bell next to me to try to like make me tap out. I was like, Oh no. <laughs> yeah, just you get, At that point you just keep like, you just take it. Yeah. I remember that, that day. <laughs> I, uh, I just, I stood in the back and didn't take a single rep at practice. I was like yeah. done for. See, I feel like it's a little bit different. Like with, like I, I know how we handle like stuff like that and like i mean i have i have run i have run i i was i missed two class one time i've never run that much in my life it was when i was a freshman but most of the time like if somebody is like accidentally late for something i don't know if it's because of like how our team is or just maybe the smaller numbers or whatever it is but like the I don't know if it, if it's embarrassment or shame or whatever it is is so much that that person usually pretty much just like goes out all out so hard in practice that there's no like more running to to do like I, really? no I'm serious like guys will like if somebody's late they don't go near him in practice like you're gonna catch a bow a hip like somebody's gonna he'll he'll throw you on the floor like because he's he's trying to like make up for his mistake so then all like by the end of practice this dude's laying on the ground exhausted wow. you know and it's like if we got a four hour practice we're running probably eight nine ten miles so it's like you yeah, it, it, most of the time i would say it's mostly just like a scolding and then it's just like sit back and watch this guy like just go all out for like you said god country because especially because especially the older guys like if you're a younger guy and you're late like the the older guys will just give you a look and then well now i'm one of the older guys it's kind of weird yeah. but like you know you used to get a look like come on man and then like that that right there like on our team that look is enough it's like your dad like yes. just being like i'm i'm like i'm ashamed i'm not like, mad at you i'm yeah, just disappointed i'm disappointed like, that's the worst yeah not ashamed yeah that's a little deep but just like a, i'm disappointed like, that's what it's like and then it's just brutal like oh it's the worst yeah. but I, how much would do y'all run like I, so, I, I have no idea yeah so most of the most of the like conditioning is done in the summertime like that's like we we basically like just train really really hard during the summer to get our bodies ready like peak physical condition going into training camp so like the that last week of workouts is like probably one of the hardest week of workouts before fall camp mm -hmm. and then like through fall camp you you don't you lift like twice a week maybe because your body's already like well during training camp you're running every day like practice practice is like two and a half hours um so they kind of like work it down like by the end of training camp just like to be easier on your bodies yeah okay so like the last couple of days like it's like a non-padded practice you know like special scenarios and stuff like that like but coach mullen does this we uh if somebody like misses tutoring or is late for tutoring or class or something we run uh fluffy clouds Oh yeah, fluffy clouds, <laughs> classic. Are, do they call him that because of you? No, we the, we just he just says get on the line. But I just uh, gotcha. So fluffy clouds are um, well, they can they can be multiple things. In middle school, they were suicides because we played basketball together. But the administration told the coaches they couldn't call them suicides. So they and they had to call them fluff. They had to call them something else. So then the coaches picked to call them fluffy clouds. So that it almost made it a little bit worse. Yeah, because it was like like a big middle finger like yeah yeah it was just like yeah <laughs> uh and uh i have a i have a story of when i was late for practice um because i missed a tutoring but we gotta go to the ads first so sit tight watch this excerpt of me giving uh, me telling you about our sponsors for today's show and uh we'll be right back hey stop what you're doing look alive it's ad time baby all right 
Hey, we gotta, I gotta pay for these lights somehow, all this electricity. Yeah, yeah, all right. So now that I have moved my mic to the right spot so that uh, you know, I don't sound like I'm standing 40 feet away from you, let's get it started. Our first sponsor today is Poppy's Candy Box. <sighs> if I could get this thing to focus, I can show you guys. And if you're listening, um, just uh, just imagine a uh, nice box. Well, is this thing gonna pick this up? Oh well. As you can see, and if you're listening, you can't, but the box is empty. And that's because I absolutely love uh, candy and I love Poppy's Candy Box candy maybe more than anybody. Um, Poppy's Candy Box is a unique business. Um, they have four different sizes. It's totally personal. Uh, personal. You can personalize it. Um, if I could get my camera to focus, you could person you can personalize it. They have large um, for thirty eight dollars, a medium for twenty eight, a small is eighteen, and a mini is eight fifty. So I just showed you is a mini, and it is plenty of candy. Like you don't have to go out and get a large to get. Um, a lot of candy, like a mini is, is enough. Um, it's, it's perfect for gifts, for parties, um, anything of that nature. And you could, I mean, they ship nationwide. I, there's a million reasons to use them. Um, and you can personalize it to you. And one thing, the, the thing that I like the most about it is that I have used other candy companies before. Like I've ordered things like this before and the candy is always stale like every time like i don't know i don't know what needs to be done to fix that but poppies they fixed it because not only does it come fresh but it stays fresh the entire time like i I, I probably ate, I ate the mini pretty quick. I, I mean, I, it was the first one I, I got a mini and I got a, a large and because, you know, I didn't want to go out and tell you guys, you know, about, um, something that I didn't believe in. And, um, I ate those pretty quick, but the, the large, you know, I just finished over a couple of weeks and it was fantastic. So if you want to contact them, I'll link their contact down in the description, go check it out. Um, and I want to thank them for being a sponsor. Our next sponsor is Isabella's pizza. First of all, if you're in Tallahassee and you love pizza, go to Isabella's. I'm, I promise. It's absolutely delicious. We have had, I've had listeners that and watchers that have gone there and they have told me they absolutely love it. It's delicious. I can't tell, I can't talk enough about it. It's Neapolitan style pizza and they don't just sell pizza. They have a wide variety of different foods. Check out their website at isabellaspn.com. I'll link that in the description as well. Mikel, who's the owner, is a fantastic person, and he's gonna he's gonna treat you right. I, shoot, I just go there sometimes to talk to him. That's how nice of a guy he is. If you don't believe me, go ask him. <laughs> he, he sees me probably more than he wants to. So again, that's isabellaspn.com. Go check them out. It's in Tallahassee. Obviously, they're not shipping like Poppy's Candy Box, so you got to get them to ship, and then you go get your lunch, go get your dinner over at Isabella's. Um, and I want to thank them for being a sponsor as well. And our final sponsor is Phone Hero. Phone Hero is our oldest sponsor, and they are the best. Again, they, I'll, I'll, I'll say it a million times, they they fix your phone the right way. Uh, like, that. I mean, that's just it. You know, I, I if you break your phone, take it to phone here. They're located in Tallahassee. They have multiple stores. They do have an online store. So if you want to check out this, they sell cases, they fix laptops. Um, they ship and they ship. So you can go to phone hero, tlh.com and check out what they got, what, whatever you need, they can do and they do it the right way. So don't take it to the mall, take it to phone hero. I promise you will thank me later. <laughs> I'll use Ray again. Ray is gone twice and got his phone fixed twice, 30 minutes, both times. Anthony just broke the front and back of his phone. He goes, Hey man, do you, you know of, of a phone place? And I go, do I send him right over to phone hero? They got him fixed right up and it's quick and they do it the right way and they treat you the right way as well. They, you know, they're not going to brush you off or, um, you know, act like you're, you're an in inconvenience to them. You know, they're really, they're really going to do the right thing and they're, they're going to do the best work th of anyone that I know of. And I've broken a whole lot of phones. So thanks for listening and, uh, let's get back to it. All right, so the story. I hope you guys enjoyed those ads. Work very hard. Love those people. Anyway, I get a call. So we got like practice. I can't remember the exact times, but like let's say we got practice at like three. I get a call at like two or two fifteen. 
So uh, it's from Coach Jones. He's like, and I'm in the building. So like I'm in the like the gym. So I get a call from him and he's like, hey, where are you? And I was like, in the gym. He's like, why are you not tutoring? He's like, why'd you miss tutoring? And I'm like, what? Because I didn't even know what day of the week it was. I was a freshman. Yeah. So uh, like my mind's spinning, you know. So <laughs> I, I'm like, oh, my bad, coach. I, I missed it. He goes, no, nah, no, nah, you didn't miss it. You're just late. <laughs> so he goes, you got to go to tutoring right now. Now, the gym is in the exact opposite side of campus from tutoring. <laughs> so, and I, I, didn't have, I didn't have a car. So... I was like begging GAs to drive me and like managers and whoever could. And, but like they all like, I swear, I think he like filled their lives up with jobs at that moment. So they couldn't do it. So I, and I had a, like a skateboard. So I fly to the, um, <laughs> to the, the more I do the tutoring. I get like whatever work I had done, done. Like I'm racing through this stuff. I get out at two forty five. So I got there in like four or five minutes. It's like a mile and a half. I get, I get out to like two forty five. I'm like, I can still make this. <laughs> so I, there's a, there's a hill coming from the more going to the gym and I, I'm on the skateboard and I'm flying like absolutely flying down this hill. And I'm on the left side of the street <laughs> This car runs a, 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 like it was a red light, but it didn't stop at the red light. Like I thought it was going to stop. Like I look up, I see the red light on my right side and I think that they're going to come to a stop and I'm coming like this. So they're coming this way, you know, almost like a 90 degree angle and they don't stop. They roll right through it. And she, like I, she hit me like flush, like completely flush. And I went, I, I got hit so hard. I don't even remember it. Like I flew from the where, where she was turning right across the entire inner like in, across the intersection and somehow landed on grass on the other side and i was like i, I like look like, uh, kind of pulled myself together was like okay nothing's broken i'm good i get, i like find my skateboard it was like i don't know it was on the other side of the intersection this lady gets out she's freaking out she's like oh we get, do we have to do we need to call an ambulance i'm like i gotta go to practice lady i gotta go so and she's like what i'm like i gotta go so i get back on the skateboard and i get my make it a practice i like i get ready boom i'm good like i'm stretching with everybody coach jones is looking at me like he's like there's no way this kid made it like you can just tell he's like what in the world and I turn over, like I roll over for a stretch and I have a scrape down my leg, like like my entire leg that I had not noticed. And I was like bleeding on the floor. Oh my God. So, but, but the adrenaline was pumping yeah. to the point because like, this is after I had run more than I've ever run for missing a class. So I'm thinking the entire time, I'm like, if I'm late, I'm toast. So like, I basically just got absolutely destroyed by a car and still made it to practice. One of my prouder moments, I must say. That's like the, I feel like that's the epitome of being like a, a student athlete. Like people would rather risk like their lives, like racing to the facility than oh. to ha tend to be punished. Like people would rather be punished by law enforcement rather than be oh. punished by their coaches. Oh, dude, I've seen, I've seen some people speed around here. Yeah. And you're like, oh, that's a, that's a football player. Yeah, <laughs> Just like, getting to, it's getting to the weird. backfield. People, it's, it's really bad in Gainesville because like it's like, no, but there's not really like that many people in the streets are like bigger than here. And it's spread out. Yeah. It's a lot more spread out than, yeah. than here. You can walk here, like you can walk end to end, I would say like of like campus facility, not like campus facility, but like, you know, like the gym's probably the farthest point to um, maybe like either like the stone building, I think, or um, the tutoring center, like the, the football stadium. Like, I mean, that's like, you can walk there in 30 minutes, you know, even though like it's a, it's a walk, you're going to be sweating, yeah. but, but you can do it. But in Gainesville, I feel like there's a lot of spots where like you might live that you couldn't just like walk to, to mm. class. That's how like this past year I lived, um, kind of, I lived on the Southwest side of campus, like just, it took i had to leave like an hour before every day or just because the traffic or just because it's so far well it depended on what time the traffic would be bad and it's like far enough to where because everybody rides scooters in gainesville oh yeah, yeah, yeah so like i actually have a 150 cc scooter it's kind of badass oh uh, yeah we're, we can't ride them really not allowed yeah oh tr dude trust me you think i'd be paying truck gas money 
Like, no, I'd have a, like some type of scooter or motorcycle or something, but you know, it, it, there was, a, I guess somebody got hurt when like, you know, back in the day or something and then they kind of banned them or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it kind of makes sense, especially around here. Uh, if you've ever been in Tally for a little while, you'll like, like I, like whenever the, cause the cameras don't work on the lights. So whenever it turns green, like it, you can always tell, like I'll look around, I can tell when people have been here a while cause they'll wait an extra second or two after it turns green. Cause there's oftentimes somebody just running that red light like at the last second. Really? Yeah. Dang. Because I mean like if the, ca like the cameras don't work and I've never seen somebody pulled over for it, you know? So it's like, <laughs> man, I've seen two people get hit on scooters here. Oh my goodness. Yeah. One was like the the dude got nailed and like like me, but he was going fat, like you know, 30, 35, and That's he fast. flew and hit a telephone pole. And he was fine. No helmet or nothing. He was what? fine. He got up and was like, Oh wow, that was a tough one. I was like, What dude, oh, what? Man. His scooter like slid. He went flying, his scooter slid probably a hundred yards. Oh and he goodness. just got up. I was like, hit it, hit it. Not even like forwards either. He hit it like on his back, <laughs> like telephone pole, bang, like, you know, dude, yeah. That's, that would hurt so bad. Yeah. Oh, dude, I'd never walk again. It's funny. Like all the other sports, if they ride their scooters, they have to put on helmets. But like coach Mullen, I remember when Mullen came to my house, he was like, yeah, everybody rides scooters. And most of the sports have to wear helmets, but we have a hundred, like a hundred, 20 guys on our team and having to like manage a hundred yeah like yeah. he was like that's that's part of something part of his job that he just does not need to do yeah, yeah that that that's a lot of people man yeah like we got a big team to deal with yeah is it it's, so for us like obviously coach ham is the head honcho but then like we have the assistant coaches all take like a group of guys and then they kind of like deal with, um, you know, like see how they're doing day to day, especially the younger guys and then in their schoolwork stuff. And then obviously like the older guys um, kind of police everything, you know, like it's a, a player led team where, you know, if the guys doing something stupid, there's a hundred percent chance one of a, one of us is going to be like, Hey, stop yeah. you know what i mean is it kind of like that like what what's the dynamic like <clears throat> on a on a 120 person team well i guess you know you have the head honcho coach mullen and then there's the offensive and defensive coordinators and then you have your position coach and then like under each position coach i guess there's like a usually a ga and a quality control guy um so uh, it depends on what school you're at like when I was at Texas, our GA, he was kind of like the babysitter for the freshmen. Like if the, like the GA came and knocked on my door and stuff like that. Like if I was late for class or like I was, he would be like, well, you're not in class. <laughs> yeah. But, um, here it's like, uh, at, at UF, it's a little bit different. Like they, they just report it to the academic people and the academic people tell, um, mullen and then we run for it after practice last year our uh like one of our captains he was like if you if you are late or whatever and we have to run for you you have to log roll the whole football field um but like i and <laughs> I'm, I'm good on that yeah that sucks i've never had to log roll fortunately but yeah that's that just sounds awful yeah. log rolling for people that don't know it's where you lay down and roll like a log you get really dizzy yeah for uh one one length yeah 100 yards yeah 100 for 100 yards <laughs> it's uh it's not fun no yeah the only thing worse is bear crawling like true you know like you know like when you bear crawl like for conditioning you know but then like there's like the the hop skip bear crawling you know yeah the one but where then you can like the run. real one where you're all the way down yes. like walking that i that that to me that's worse uh yeah i, I hate that i do the walk skip one where yeah, you yeah oh, I, push up and yeah, run you, with your yeah, legs yeah, yeah. you get like a two three steps in yes. there before you gotta go, uh, go back down yeah that's the best way to do it what kind of conditioning you guys do uh, we it depends because there's like so many different like we have like different cycles like we'll for four weeks we'll do like us uh, at it for four weeks in our five day week we'll do like something different every day it'll be like acceleration phase lateral change of direction 
like running curves, all different types of, but then like towards, towards the end of the summer we did like, I guess they were like metabolic plays, which is like what you would do, like the workload you would do in a single play but you're not actually playing football. You're just running. So like we would run 40 yards. Like we would run for six seconds. They would blow the whistle, line back up, run, blow the whistle. Like just to simulate it like a real game. Yeah. Kind of. Uh, yeah, gotcha. But that, that was tough. Yeah. We, I, I watch football and I think I could ne- like, I could never do that. Like I, my body just isn't, like I haven't learned over the years how to like take a helmet to my thigh, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like I just I couldn't do that. Yeah, you yeah. know I, I feel like I kind of got used to it after like probably my first year. Like I, like I just was so excited to play football. Like the, yeah. that that's how I feel about basketball. Like I don't like playing basketball. Oh no no you would you it would be hell. For yeah you. yeah if you came out if you did what we did today which was light. Now the freshman didn't think it was light, but it's light. If 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 you do what we did today, it was an hour and a half. You would have puked. Mm. Like we probably ran probably five miles, six miles, but it's mostly sprinting. So it's like, and it's pretty much just straight running. But it's like you know you go you get up and down, and we we don't do very much conditioning. We like we have some preseason conditioning before we start training camp. Um, but like we, I mean, all the older guys tell the younger guys, you know, like put on weight before training camp because training camp is four hour practices every single day of pure running. Like that's uh, like, even when you're learning, you're just pretty much running, yeah. you know? I mean, that's the, all basketball is, is yeah, running, it's, right, it's, really? it's running. And then obviously there's like fundamental stuff. You learn offense, defense, all that yeah. stuff. But, but like the actual physical aspect, like yeah, you have to run, you have to, to run. Play. And it's, and in college, most of that running is just sprinting. So it's like, you, you got to change, like obviously changing direction. Uh, that's probably pretty similar to like how you have to stop and start and things like that. Right. But just the uh, consistency for how long, like I can run like just forever. Like I, I went for a run um, when I was home and I, like I, I got, I got, I ran like four and a half miles and just got bored and then like ran home. <laughs> like I can just keep running. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. because especially at a, like a jog, like at that pace, it, until like my knees give out or something, I can just keep, like my lungs are not going to give out. They're not, you know, because I'm just so used to like waking up in the morning, like I, like doing conditioning just just to do it. Like uh, two days ago, like here's my day. I wake up, I went, I ran sand hills in the in the middle of the woods, and then I went, I lifted. I did a, uh, like a skill workout. It was like mostly catch and shoot stuff. Like, um, you know, and then I came back before practice, did an hour and a half workout um, on the court, um, which was much more difficult than one. Then I had to practice and then I stayed after to work with some guys. And then at the end of the day, like, you know, stretch or whatever. But like in that day, like that is, that's a lot of running. You know, it's like <laughs> half the shooting workout was like shoot the ball, run to half court, run back, shoot the run full court, run back, shoot the, you know, it's like, it, it's just the shape you got to be in though, you know? Yeah. Like but that. then I look at y'all and I'm like, okay, well, they may not be able to run like me, maybe not that for that long, but their explosion and the fact that y- you, you can have like four dudes fall on top of you with everything they got, they just jump on top of you. Like linemen, whenever I see dudes get like it, my favorite thing in football here, I'm going to say it. My favorite thing in football is when there's an interception and one of the offensive linemen gets a hold of a, like a cornerback. Oh, yeah. It's absolutely brutal. <laughs> it's, like, it's so funny. Like, especially if they're not paying attention, you can't really do it as much now because like, yeah, they put yeah, in a no, bunch of rules yeah, and stuff, rules, but yeah. like just watching somebody like completely like, not paying attention, getting their head taken off. Yeah, those, those guys are, those guys are big. Yeah. And they, they can move. That's what always surprised me. Yeah. is like when you see one, like actually like a run in a straight, like they're, they're fast. Yeah. Like they, it's, they think like, just because they're big they can't move but like really like line play itself is very quick movements like well you see them get off the like the especially um i don't i don't even know the further not a tight end but the guy on the inside of that the okay. tackle a tackle like they, they when they get like the ball snapped and they got to get all like you know yeah, get to the outside slide. yeah exactly yeah that they're quick yeah, yeah they got quick feet yeah usually 
like left tackles. Um, one of the most athletic guys on the field, really. Why less specifically? Because you're protecting the quarterback's backside. Uh, okay. So if it's a lefty quarterback, then you got to put that sucker on the right side? Basically, yeah. Okay, so your best, your, your best at, like athletic lineman, you're probably going to. Yeah. We had like a really good one. He got drafted this past uh, season, Stone Forsyth. He went to West Orange, actually. Okay. Oh, oh, I know him. Yeah. Was it, he was, what? He was on that ridiculously good West Orange team. Wasn't yeah, it was like him, Woody yeah. Barrett. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They they, they yeah. hung like fifty on us my junior year. Yeah, that that, that, uh, that team was ridiculous. Yeah, we were good. We didn't we make it? What, what did we make it to in, in football? Our senior year, we made it to the regional finals. We lost to Seminole. Who? Uh, that was at home, right? Yeah, yeah. That was my last football game. That was tough. Dude, I that stuff that still hurts my heart to think about it. Like, yeah, I I didn't even get to play in the playoffs my senior year because I got sick. Really? Yeah, I got the stomach flu. Flu game, Jordan. It, flu game. Jordan? Let, let me tell you, <laughs> if I had the regular flu, I could have played. Not the stomach flu. I was thirteen pounds in four and a half days. Oh yeah, God. Isaac actually had it at the same time. Yeah, it was absolutely brutal it was the it was the only time in my life where i actually thought i was gonna die really yeah like i was that sick like i i remember laying on my bathroom floor like crying and like my mom comes in and i'm like mom you gotta take me to the hospital and she was like <laughs> uh, you're gonna be fine <laughs> like and of course you know she's right but like i was like this is it like because <laughs> i hadn't eaten in like four and a half days i didn't eat at all oh my goodness. or really drink anything because as soon as i'd have a sip of water boom puking you know but have you had COVID? yeah yeah i did i had it like way like way back yeah i had it last june yeah was- how was it for you um, I was I was only it was like less than forty eight hours. By the time that I realized I had it, and my my symptoms like broke, like my fever broke, and I was like fine because I thought I was just like had like a long weekend. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah I know what you're talking. About. <laughs> I was uh, I felt the same way. Uh, I was in practice a couple times with it. That was fun. Yeah. Uh, but most of the team had already had it, so I was like, man, just got a cold going on, you yeah. know. But um. I was like, maybe my body is just like mad at me or something. And then I was like, I woke up with like a fever. And I was like, oh. I had three days where I felt like I had a cold. One day where I was like, I don't know, I'm not getting out of bed today. And then after that, basically fine. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Like, I never had a fever. Just felt like really, really run down for one day. And that was it. Yeah. Like, a bunch of people. It's so weird to talk about it with different people because everybody experienced it differently. Dude, like I, I'm, I had a couple teammates that got it and were out of it. Like I'm talking like wow. horrible. And then like former teammates that is. And then you know, a couple guys you know that got it and they they didn't even know they had it. Yeah, you know, like I I had I had the you know like the the body ache, the fever. And the, I was congested, but I didn't lose my taste or smell. Oh, really? One of my roommates got it. We all had it at the same time. <laughs> he <laughs> lost his taste and smell, and I think he, I'm pretty sure he still doesn't have it. Oh, okay. That's what I was going to ask. I was going to ask if he ever got it back. I, I lost mine so. too, but uh, honestly, every time I get a cold, like my, whenever I get, my, whenever my nose is real stuffed up, I get, I lose my taste and smell. Yeah. So I was like, that's why I kept thinking it was a cold for so long, was because of that. Like that always happens. Yeah. And then one of my teammates was like, eh, I don't know, dude. Like, <laughs> you should, uh, you, you you know what he said exact quote i don't know dude you look kind of slow today and i go yeah well maybe i got it <laughs> like <laughs> yeah i remember we sat in like a uh, like a drive-up test center and like we got in the line at eight o'clock and i was like i had the fever and everything by the time we got to the test site like because the line was like an, a year long. We were sitting in line from eight to one. Oh my God. By the time I got the the, the nose swab, my fever broke and I was fine. <laughs> Dude, what? Yes. Did they only have one testing site there? Dude, I have. It was like, it was like, I guess at the peak kind of at like the worst it had been at that moment. So like everybody was going to get tested. Oh, dude! Here we just rolled up. You can still, you can still, you can. Dude, see, honestly, here, like, 
the um the numbers absolutely skyrocketed like i really like i wore a mask when i was indoors but like yeah some people just didn't you know what i mean skyrocketed and then immediately dropped off because just everybody got it (laughs) that's crazy (laughs) i know it's it it really is kind of nuts like if you give you like look at the numbers they just went oh man that was cool that probably just sounded absolutely incredible on there sorry about that i just smacked my computer but the the numbers were just a sharp peak up and down yeah but all right man I, that about does it i like to keep them around like 45 50 minutes because uh people don't seem to like me that much to listen to me more longer than that they might like you though but yeah, i hope so you know and also the export time on these this puppy i mean it's gonna be a while so yeah the the last podcast was it took eight hours to export or something Jeez. now i it, it was because i had like five other problems going on but you know whatever it is but i i'm trying i'm gonna try to um I'm, i've been looking into doing like a skype like skype call because like up until this point i have not had the uh um technology to like do it over skype where it was like good or like yeah. not skype but um zoom or whatever where it like sounded really good because yeah. like this is gonna sound like this will sound so much better than like over the phone basically yeah. but um i'm working on that so i'll definitely have to get you back on but thanks for coming up. what are you what are you doing here <laughs> that's what i'm uh-huh. just here hanging out <laughs> yeah so um i kind of kind of just came up we, this is well we, it's our last weekend off before the season starts so like they gave us the weekend off i'm here tonight going to orlando tomorrow to watch my little brother play and then kind of just enjoying my last weekend of freedom before gotta lock it in for the season you know all right man well let's hang out <laughs> yeah. well i got practice tomorrow but you know we can uh you know like make some food or something i don't know you need I don't, to clean. I don't know. this is my I need, I need to do the dishes what i need to do <laughs> hey you know i was making pickled uh pickled eggs the other day that's why all this stuff is out here you want to try one uh, yeah, I, you have to look, look, look rally this up and you can try a pickled egg pickled uh, jalapeno egg. all right everybody this is episode number 15 with jordan pouncey Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you have not. I will be doing a giveaway. I will not spoil it right now. So see you next time. Have a good one, everybody.